Hi and welcome back to another Scouts Hereford and Worcester YouTube video. Today we're going to be introducing a new um, collection of videos that I'm going to be releasing. So to go along with the videos, things that you can do at home to keep things scouty during this time, I'm also going to be releasing videos about badges that you can complete at home. I'll be going through badges for each of the sections that are easy enough that you can do them at home and hopefully get them signed off whilst you whilst we're all in this situation so that you don't have to wait until you go back to be able to earn some more badges. The first badge we're going to cover is the photography badge as this is a badge that can be gained in beavers, cubs and scouts. You may have noticed that there were three videos that went up at the same time. Make sure that you are on the right video for your section. In this video I'm going to be focusing on the scout photography badge. There are two styles of photography that you can use for this badge. You can use still photography, taking photos, or video photography. For this video, I'm going to be focusing on the still photography only. Before we get into everything, I'm going to show you the different types of cameras there are. Here are the four cameras that I'm going to talk about. First off, there is the smartphone cameras. All modern day smartphones contain cameras and the way that technology has developed means that these cameras have improved dramatically. And because of how readily available they are, plus the fact that they are very portable and full of features that are easy to use, smartphones are probably the most common cameras used. Next we have our compact digital cameras. These are cameras that are very portable, so they are great for people that might want to have a camera available for something like a holiday, but don't want to be carrying around something too big. Most of these can easily fit in a pocket. These cameras also come in lots of forms and with different features. For example, this camera here is actually a waterproof camera with some drop protection as well. This makes it ideal for things like camps. The next step up would be a higher end digital camera. A camera like this has a lot of similarities to the previous camera, but adds some extra features for those who want features like better picture quality. The main difference between this camera and the previous one is the addition of mountable lenses. Having lenses like this has benefits over a fixed lens. First of all, there is the ability to use optical zoom instead of digital zoom, which means you are able to zoom in without losing any quality in the photo. The second benefit is the fact that you can swap the lenses, which gives the camera a lot more versatility by allowing extra zoom or even adding effects like a fisheye lens. Finally, there are the DSLR cameras. These cameras, as you can see, are a lot bigger than the other cameras. This is because they have a lot more capabilities. Because of these, they are the types of camera that you will normally find professional photographers using. But they are also popular with amateurs that appreciate better quality photos. They are simple to use in automatic mode, but if you learn how to correctly use all the controls and settings, then they are very powerful tools. Once again, they have the capabilities of the mountable lenses and also add features such as a viewfinder, which is essentially a peephole on the camera that lets you see exactly what the camera can see through the lens without having to look on a screen, which can be really helpful in situations like a really sunny day when it can be hard to see the screens because of light reflecting on them. Through this video, I will focus on using smartphone cameras and DSLR cameras. But you will find that a lot of the information can be used for the digital cameras in the same way. For still photography, there are a few sections that you must complete to be able to get the badge. The first one, you must choose one of the two following activities. Either produce 12 photographs that feature at least two of the following um, photographic techniques. Portrait, still life, landscape or seascape, sport or action, or time lapse. Or well, the other one you can choose is to produce six black and white photographs based on a theme of your choice. And then you must explain the steps that you took to create them and the impact of using black and white as an alternative to colour images. The next section of the badge is to show that you know the main settings on a digital camera or a smartphone camera. So I'm going to show a video now on changing modes and settings on both the smartphone and the camera. And I'll also include how to change things such as the exposure. So now I'm going to go into some more detail on how you can change modes and settings on the smartphone and camera. So if you 
get your smartphone with the camera open. So along here, you can see there are the different modes along here. So we have photo, slide along, we have video, and then we've also got more. We've got things like panorama, so that's taking a really wide photo, slow motion and hyperlapse. Also on the photo, there is this button here, which on a smartphone will change it from that camera, so you can see the duck, to the back camera, so now you can see me filming. <laughs> then we'll change it back. And so some of the settings that you might want to change, you've got the flash. So on this one, you can have the flash either off, on, or on auto. So if it's on auto, it will detect whether it's light or dark and turn the flash on if you need it. There's also this here, which is adding a timer. So with this, you can press to take a photo and then it will give you time to actually get in the photo yourself if you've got the phone propped up somewhere. And then you've also got things like this, which will change the ratio. So at the moment, as you can see, it's on the full screen or we can have it like this. So it's more of a square. And then if we go into the settings bit here, there are some more things on here. So for example, in here, we could change the resolution of the video that it takes. And we can also turn things like HDR on and off, which will make a difference to your photos and videos. And that's how you change the modes and settings on your smartphone. So now we will look at changing modes and settings on our big camera. So obviously I said here, we've got the um, shutter button for taking photos. But if you want to take videos instead, all you have to do is press this record button. We've also got, if you if you turn it on, so this wheel here can take us to different modes and settings on the camera. So for example, if we twist it so that it goes to scene, we now have different scenes. So you saw there it said night portrait. And if we could go along, we can do a night landscape, party, beach snow. So there's all these different settings which will set your camera up in the best settings to take a photo like that. Now, also on this dial, we've got other things. So we've got portrait, and then we've got landscape. So obviously portrait you'd use for taking photos of people and the landscape you'd use for taking pictures of the landscape. Another useful setting on here. So as we said with the smartphone, you can have it set up so the flash is automatic. So if we have this on auto, that's what this camera will do, it'll have it on automatic. But there's also a setting that's no flash. So if you have it on that, no matter whether it's light or dark, it will not put the flash on, which can be useful in some situations. Another thing with this camera is actually a setting on the lens. So this little switch here that says A and M, that is for focus. So A stands for automatic. So that's when we push down the button halfway and it focused for us. But also with this camera, if we switch it to M, that means we can focus it ourselves by twisting this ring here. So that's some of the settings on the camera. Obviously, you can look into more detail about what each of these settings do, because there's a lot of settings and I haven't really got time to go through them all with you. One of the modes that I have on this phone here, which I'm sure some other phones will have, is a pro mode. This mode lets you control more settings on the camera. So for example, we have here the ISO, so the exposure control. As you can see, if we change at the moment, it is on auto, but we can change that to manual and I can change the exposure of the camera. Now you can't see much change at the moment because there's not a lot of light to change the effect, but this changes the amount of light that is let into the camera. Another thing we can also change on here is the white balance. If we change this, then look, it can go quite red or you can change it all the way to this end and it goes really blue. 
I'm now going to show you how you can change the exposure on a camera like this. I'm going to be doing this on my camera, but this may change for different models and different um, brands. So for this camera, I'm going to turn it on to start with. I'm then going to turn this dial to the M for manual. Now from here, if I use this ring here, I can turn this around. And if you look at this number, that will change. That is the shutter speed changing. So I can do that to change the shutter speed. So this is how fast the shutter will um, open and close. Also then, if I press the I, I can choose from different settings down here. So if I click on the ISO, I get a range of different ISO settings. So this is how much light the um, sensor will let in. So the higher the ISO, the more light that it's going to let in. So that's better for darker environments. And then if we just click that, and now that we have changed the shutter speed and the ISO, this will change the exposure of the camera. And the right combination of all of these settings together will give you different exposures, which will help you for different situations. One of the things that you need to understand for your photography badge is the impact that shutter speed will have on a photo. So I've written up this little thing here. So shutter speed is essentially how fast the shutter opens and closes to take a photo. So as you can see here, a slow shutter speed will be open for a long time before closing and a fast shutter speed will open and close straight away. This affects the amount of light that will be let um, into the photo. So the longer that the shutter is open for, the more light it will, be, it will be exposed to. So this would be something that you'd use for a nighttime shot, as it would let in more light so that you could see the image more. A fast shutter speed will open fast and then close. So this would be good if there is lots of bright light, as it will just take the photo and you won't need to let in more light. Otherwise, the photo will become overexposed and I'll have too much light in it. Another setting that you need to understand to, for your badge is the aperture. The aperture is essentially how large the hole is that is allowing the image to enter the camera. Changing the aperture will change what we like to call the depth of field. So this is this will be affect this will affect how um things will be in focus and out of focus on your image. So if you were to have a large aperture so a large gap allowing the photo to enter the camera. This is more likely to let everything in the photo be in focus. If you were to have a small aperture, so a smaller hole allowing the image to go in, this is when you get that effect, when you've got, say, a person that's in focus, but then the background behind them is very blurry. So changing the aperture can allow you to change the depth of field. So the next section of the badge is finding accessories that are available for you to use with your camera. There are loads available and here are just a few that I thought of. So a tripod, which is great for keeping a camera steady, maybe you're doing a nighttime shot and you need to keep the camera still. Things like flashes, obviously lighting is a very important part of photography and a flash can really help. Memory cards, you need memory cards so that you can store the photos and um, take them to places Put them on different laptops so that you can edit them. There are filters which you put on the end of the lenses to make photos look different. And there's other things like microfiber cloths which are great for keeping the end of the lens clean which will help get a great photo. There are many accessories available and all you have to do is look online to see what you can find. So the next stage on the badge is to edit a selection of your images using editing software on a computer or using an app on your smartphone. So as you can see, I'm here on my gallery and look, I'm up in the top corner. So right from here, I can select a photo. So if I select the photo of the duck and now at the bottom of this picture, I'm going to click on the um, edit bit. So this is giving me some options to edit. So as we can see here, it's giving me the option to crop at the moment. So I can decide I don't want so much background. I just want the duck like that and I can crop it in. And then 
at the bottom, there's lots of different things that we can do to edit. If I click on the one at the end, this controls things like colors and brightness. So at the moment I've got brightness and if I move the slider along, as you can see, the image gets brighter and darker. I think the brightness is fine, so I'm just going to leave that where it was. But there's other things we can edit, like the contrast. So I can slide along the contrast and as you can see, there's a difference now in the colors and stuff. I think we'll give it a bit of contrast because it adds a bit of depth to the photo. Next, we can change things like the saturation. So this is changing the um, colors and how much they pop and stuff. So if I slide it this way, look, you can see that red's now gone really bright. But then if I do it this way, it goes black and white. I quite like the look of the black and white one. So I'd leave it at that. Now, when I'm happy with what I've done, I'll click save in the top and that will save my image there. And that's all you've got to do to be able to edit your photo on your phone. So one thing to remember when um, doing photography is that not everything always goes right. As you probably saw in my gallery on the previous clip, there's a lot of clips there that I thought weren't good enough. So I did have to do them again. So the next part of the badge is diagnosing typical faults that will happen when you're doing photography, both when you're taking the photos and at the editing stages. So for example, there may be times where the image is overexposed because too much light has been let in. And this is where changing the shutter speed and stuff will come in handy to be able to fix that problem. Another thing that you need to be able to know for your badge is how to reduce things like camera shake and movement in your photos. Going back to the accessories, a good way to reduce camera shake is by propping the camera on something like a tripod. Or for example, when I'm filming, I know that I don't have very steady hands. So instead of me holding the camera and it being shaky, I've actually got a little stand, which I'll show you here. So this is my little setup. I've got a little stand that I've made of Lego and a light to light me up and stuff. But I've got that there so that the camera doesn't shake around whilst I'm filming. So you've got to be able to identify things like that. So the problems that might happen and how you may be able to overcome them. The final section of the badge is that you need to show that you know how to take care of the camera properly. This could be things like cleaning, so you know how to clean the camera properly, clean the end of the lens, stuff like that. Also that you know how to store lenses properly and the camera properly so that they don't break so that you can use them. You just need to show that you know exactly how to look after a camera. Those are all the sections that you need to cover to get your Scout Photography badge. I hope this video will be helpful in helping you gain that badge. If you take any nice photos whilst doing the badge that you'd like to share with us, please send them in to stay safe at scoutshw.org.uk. Have fun, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.